Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I am your host, Matt Watson. It is good to have you this morning. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Glad you're joining us. This special edition of Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers, is brought to you by KHTS in collaboration with SCVI and I Lead Charter Schools. We come to you live each day, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m., providing support and updates for you. We, uh, we launched our show uh, along with our website back in the middle of March, back when, uh, when your students got sent home. And uh, so we opened up here uh, to support you on your distance learning journey. But we continue to work with you as the summer opens up. You know, you want your kids uh, to, to stay sharp, continue learning and growing. And so we're going to leave our website online. In, in fact, I believe we continue to add some resources to that website, Homeschooling Answers. We've got all different kinds of uh, activities and, uh, and fun resources for your kids there. Not just uh, worksheets for them to download. No, there's uh, some really cool and engaging activities for your kid. We've got them sorted out by grade level, by subject area. So head on over to homeschoolinganswers.com. Check it out. We've even got some parent resources there for you to to help you get through the summer and get back into the school year in August, whatever that's going to look like. You know, school districts are starting to open up a little bit and, and, and letting us, giving us an idea as to uh, what we can expect in the fall. It will be interesting. It, it looks like just about everywhere around the valley here, we're going to have some form of hybrid learning, unless, of course, you choose to keep your children at home, which I would certainly understand if that's what you want to do. Well, we have got a great show today, and I, I'm, I'm looking at our schedule this week. It's going to be a, a great week. It's a short week. You know, we're taking Friday off to celebrate the holiday, but uh, but still, I don't think we've had a week that has been this stacked. We, we'll, we'll get to Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and, and just a little bit later in, in the show, but let's take a look at today's show. We've got uh, Norb Monis from a Royal Suite Furniture here in studio with us this morning. He's He's got a great offer for you this week. We'll talk about that in just a minute. We'll have our show's official life licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Debray, and in hour number two, we'll be speaking with Monica Marshall and Cindy Stevens from the College of the Canyon Center for Early Childhood Education. My first guest, as I said, is Norb Monis. He is the founder and president of A Royal Suite Furnishings. Norb is a man of high value, high values, high quality products, products that are made in America, great service to his customers, and values to values his community and obligation to give back. Norb, wel welcome back to the show. It's good to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Need you move a lot closer. There you go. There we go. It's good to have you. So um, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about, for uh, uh, those of our listeners that aren't as familiar with, uh, with your story, tell us a little bit about a Royal Suite story. You originated here in, in Santa Clarita, correct? We did. We originated in Santa Clarita 43 years ago. All right. um, and happy to be here. We've been serving the community uh, uh, with furniture needs. Originally, we started out in waterbeds, and we've grown and grown and grown, and now we're a full-line furniture store. I remember years ago, way back when you were the waterbed store. Yeah, definitely. So um, what role has a Royal Suite played here in the community? What organizations have you, you partnered with, and, and why is being such a strong part of the community so important to you guys? Well, we're extremely active with the high school programs. Uh, we support the Optimist Boys Club. Um, we, we spend a lot of time with the community, inside the community, supporting all the ongoing events on a regular basis. That's kind of what we've always done from the beginning. Uh, community support is, is very important to us. Well, that's, and it's important to the community that uh, that our businesses give back. So uh, I know you guys had to shut down for a little while. Are you guys back open and, and online? And, and We are back open and we're excited to be back. Um, we had all of our all of our people report back to work immediately as soon as we needed them it was a long 56 days but <laughs> we are operating at full capacity right now yeah it's uh, it's interesting shane and i here in the studio would always talk about how long has it been now gosh it, it, those months of march and april seem so long but but yeah business owners like yourselves boy you guys were counting the days weren't you we had the days we had the hours we knew exactly when we closed and when we were going to be opening you know we prepared a few weeks before uh getting ready making sure the store was in the condition it needed to be for a clean environment um, we spent uh probably 10 
10 days re-cleaning the store, oh. uh, to m removing a lot of merchandise, wiping everything down. We, we have a very strong, strong, clean store right now. That's good to hear. Uh, gosh, this, the size that your warehouse is, I can't imagine there's uh, there's many places you could shop that would be a lot safer than yours. No, we've, uh, we were ahead of the game in a lot of different ways because we had plexiglass up and we had, we had, we repositioned our desks with our salespeople, we repositioned our, our warehouse, um, we prepared well in advance. Now, you guys pride yourselves on selling primarily uh, American-made furniture. Uh, why is that important to you and, and why should that be important to your customers? Well, besides the quality difference when you when you purchase American made product, I feel strong that we, we need to keep the American worker working daily, every day on our own soil. Um, our vendors that we've supported, some of them for as long as 35 or 40 years, we never left and went and bought merchandise elsewhere we stayed in the states and supported our, our local american made product uh, st stronger and deeper into their line and that loyalty is is so important uh, now with the the quarantine affecting different states in a different in different ways um have you had your suppliers uh are they still supplying everything or has there been trouble getting stuff coming in well the the Getting the merchandise in has never really been a problem. Good. You know, we're used to delivering merchandise within a reasonable amount of time, within a couple of weeks, on some of our custom-made, American-made product. Yes, we have had a delay of three or four weeks in some cases, but that's only because customers are coming in now and they're wanting to purchase exactly what they want. They don't want to buy something that's been in a box, been sitting on a container, been sitting in a warehouse. Our merchandise is made and shipped, ordered within 24 hours after it's being made, it's shipped to the customer's homes. Well, that's that's fantastic. So uh, we're talking to, to Norb Monis. He is the founder and CEO of uh, uh, a Royal Suite furniture, uh, furniture store. Um, so we're talking about buying American-made stuff. Is there really a difference between the quality of stuff made here in the United States versus stuff made overseas? Uh, tremendous difference. Uh, for one thing, our, our merchandise, we know exactly what's going in. We're getting our lumber that goes inside of our sofas and our loves and our sectionals come from the U.S. Our upholstery, uh, the labor force, the density of foam that we sell in our merchandise, we actually can control the density of the foam. What, what I mean by that is that if you have a stronger density of foam inside of your cushions and you're sitting on it every day, it's gonna last longer. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, out of the country vendors, manufacturers tend to start cutting corners and putting up a less density foam in the seats. So you get one or two years and it starts dipping. Uh, you feel soft spots. You get dad's little groove there. Yeah, in the couch, exactly. Yeah. Because people <laughs> tend to sit in the same seat that they yeah. sit in every day that they get home. We use a high 1.8 or 2.0 density foam. It, it doesn't mean a lot to our customers. It le means a whole lot to us because we know that that's going to last longer. And chances are, our sofas are gonna be looking as good as they did brand new five, six, eight years from now. Chances are you're going to be changing the style sooner than you're going to be changing because of the quality. And I can imagine, uh, especially when you've got those 30, 40 year relationships with your suppliers, you're uh, also able to um, to work with them a lot more closely. Get, like you said, the, the things that you need. If uh, say, for example, I, I buy a, a dining room set from you and, and a chair breaks uh, from an overseas company, it might be a little bit more difficult to get a replacement for that chair as to where if we've got somebody uh, here stateside, you can probably make sure that you well, still have that thing available, yeah, right? Yeah, parts available on the states is, is a huge thing. I mean, just having those relationships with our vendors, yeah. our manufacturers. I mean, when, when we were allowed to open, we were getting merchandise the first week. Why? Because we're so loyal to our American-made dealers, manufacturers, that they were shipping us. We were the first on the list. When, when other retailers left and went overseas to buy their merchandise, we stayed right by their side. So when, when the bell went off and we were ready to go, we were getting shipments the first week after. 
Okay, fantastic. So uh, the 4th of July is, is a perfect time to promote American-made products. Uh, how's the Royal Suite celebrating the 4th? Well, we've, we've got some unique things going on. Again, we're having our annual 4th of July parking lot sale, which goes from July 2nd to July 6th. All right. Uh, we move merchandise in there that, that may be discontinued. The fabric may have changed. We're constantly changing our floor models in our stores to give us different looks all the time. So we may change to a new fabric and put that one outside. The deals are tremendous, 50, 60, 70% off in our parking lot. And that parking lot runs every day from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, a lot of our customers are waiting for us the minute we start setting them up. Wow, so 9 a.m. To, to 8 p.m., and is that every day, seven days a week? That's every day, seven days a week. Including 4th of July? You guys going to be open 4th of we July? We will be open the full day. We've found that, that customers are out shopping and want to be serviced. It's unfair to us to close at 2 or 3 o'clock. Um, <laughs> our people are committed to, to our customers and our clientele to be there and to be open during that period. So we will be there right up until 8 p.m. on the 4th of July. That's fantastic. I was going to ask your plans for the holiday. Sounds like you plan on working. Oh, I plan on working, and I'll be in the store every single day, so like <laughs> I am on these special holidays. I've got customers that have been dealing with me and want to see me and it's been going on for 40 years and I will continue to be there. Yeah, absolutely. So that sounds great. Uh, so for those of you, for those of our listeners that don't know, uh, where can they find you, Norb? Where are you at? Well, we're at 26536 Carl Boyer Drive. That's in Santa Clarita. We're across from Sam's Club, uh, Super Walmart up there. And, um, and come see us. So right across from the Walmart there, right around the corner from the uh, the Aquatic Center. So I know our listeners know right where you're at. And what about a website, a phone number? You've got, uh, well, got those to give to our listeners? we can be reached at 661-259-7000. We can also be reached at www.aroyalsuite.com. Fantastic. And I'm going to go ahead and post the, uh, the website and, and your phone number here on our Facebook Live feed. Those of you that are uh, listening on Facebook Live, you can check that out here in just a second. And those of you that are not, head on over to the, the KHTS Radio Facebook Live feed. And, and like I said, I'll be posting Norb's phone number and, uh, and website to a Royal Suite Furnishings. Norb, I, I know you've got a lot going on out there. Uh, you, I'm sure folks are complaining that the boss is running a little bit late this morning thank you so much for coming in and uh we'll uh, uh we'll talk to you real soon thank you very much thank you and we will uh take a quick commercial break and come back right after this you are listening to scvi charter schools eye on the valley homeschooling answers i'm your host matt watson on your hometown station khts all right great practice it's time to clean up now who wants to help clean up the dugout <laughs> Choose me, bottles and cans are worth real money. That's right, Los Angeles County. Recycling beverage containers puts cash back in your pocket, and it's great for the environment, too. Every year, more than 24 billion CRV-eligible beverage containers are sold in California, and nearly a quarter of them end up in landfills, where they can take more than 100 years to break down. Do your part and recycle your beverage containers. Visit cleanla.com to find out more. A public service message from the city of Santa Clarita. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Consumers Furniture is back open for your business. The safety of our community and our staff, above all, is most important to us. We will provide a safe and clean environment for you to find the perfect piece of furniture for your home. To help you with your purchase, we are offering 25% off your entire order or 24 months same as cash financing. And for our awesome essential workers, we will deliver locally your furniture free of charge. Consumers Furniture is located in the Centerpoint Shopping Center, below Sam's Club and Walmart. With many auto dealers currently closed, Reeves Complete Auto Center is open to handle service and repairs for your vehicle. With a two-year, 24,000-mile parts and labor warranty, Dave Reeves and his team have been exceeding their customers' expectations for decades. Reeves Complete Auto Center is here for you while your dealer is closed. On Soledad and Ruther, ReevesService.com. Reeves Complete Auto Center caring about Santa Clarita and you. Introducing the new Impossible Cur Sandwich. This is plant? This is so good. I can't believe it. This definitely tastes just as good as sausage. I think it might taste better than sausage. Get the Impossible Cur Sandwich when you order on the BK app. You can also get free delivery only at Burger King. 
Our trash has got to go somewhere, and Chiquita Canyon Landfill is helping make the Santa Clarita Valley a little greener. Our local landfill creates clean energy from our waste disposal to power 10,000 homes each year. With their 9.2 megawatt clean energy facility harnessing the landfill's methane gas, you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. Your hometown station. It's no secret that KHTS has the best midday talk show lineup around. If you've missed any of your favorites, no problem. KHTS has you covered. Podcasts for all the midday shows can be found right on our website, hometownstation.com. Whether you missed a show from two days, two weeks, two months, or two years ago, and you want to catch up, we got you covered. They're all right there. Plus extra podcasts, too. That's hometownstation.com. Hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM. 1220. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community minded, and relationship driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. Santa Clarita Lanes is more than just a bowling center. It's fun, food, and parties for the entire family. In addition to their popular leagues that run every day of the week, Santa Clarita Lanes offers rooms for kids' birthday parties and game rooms. And if you love the NFL, Vincenzo's Pizza is the place to be on Sundays with the complete NFL football package, showing every game on its 10 televisions and widescreens. Whether it's bowling, birthdays, or the NFL, Santa Clarita Lanes offers the best in family entertainment. Hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I am Matt Watson, and it is good to have you. You know, it's always good to see Norb. I'm glad to hear that things are are going well out at a Royal Suite Furniture. And uh, sounds like they're having a great sale, 4th of July sale. <coughs> Excuse me. Speaking of Fourth of July, what have you got planned? What's what's going on? You know, this valley usually does a Fourth of July upright. It's uh, it's going to be a different year though, but uh, still a couple of staples this year. Shane, what about you? How do you how do you normally celebrate Fourth of July, Shane? Do you have a, a, a particular tradition or, or plan that you normally follow? You know, nothing too nothing too set in stone. At the very least, meet up uh, some family member's house in Santa Clarita area. Uh, occasionally we've been up to Bass Lake, uh, just kind of, yeah, a few hours north. So we've been up there to celebrate, uh, but nothing really set in stone, just kind of getting together, setting off some fireworks and kind of doing the basics. <clears throat> got a frog in my throat. Are you a parade fan? You, you do the pancake breakfast or anything like that? Any of the, the local traditions? You know, nothing, not, not a very hyper local focus. <laughs> I, li- I like to get out there. I'm, I'm, I'm a parade fan. I enjoy watching the parade and I actually did a march in the parade one year. Um, I'm actually, believe it or not, although I look more like a pancake breakfast guy, I've never done the pancake breakfast, but I have run in the 5k, believe it or not. Um, That's an upset, Matt. <laughs> if, if you would have taken bets on that right? beforehand. Uh, yep, definitely. Definitely. This was a, a long time ago though. <laughs> 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 well, like I said, um, things are going to be a bit different this year, uh, in and around uh, Santa Clarita. And I'm guessing across the nation, 4th of July celebrations are going to be real different. You're going to get a lot of celebrations virtually, although, uh, you know, it's kind of tough to do fireworks virtually. There's just something about, uh, uh, fireworks. You need to be there in person. And I'm glad to hear 
that the city really did a lot of work. They had, they had a lot of people working on, I'm sure, a lot of committees trying to 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 get the celebration online as much or well in person as much as possible and up and running. Um, there's uh, the city's Fourth of July uh, uh, patriotic tour of houses. Have you have you heard about this one? It's uh, it's really kind of a cool idea. I know producer Sarah is is getting involved. You just decorate the front of your house or your business and submit a photo. Top three photos or top three houses or businesses will win a gift card to the Santa Clarita business of their choosing. <laughs> kind of cool. You win a gift card, you choose where to. Uh, so, yeah, you decorate your house, decorate your business, take a picture, send it in. And I've actually got the submission form right here. I'm going to go ahead and post in, in just a second. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and, and get that up right now. And producer Sarah, feel free to doctor that as needed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you go ahead and decorate your house, your business, and you can have a, a little competition there and, uh, and decorating the place. There's also a similar event, um, but way cuter, way, way cuter. And that is the city's take on the 4th of July parade this year. It is the Santa Clarita 2020 patriotic peewee parade H have you guys seen this online at all i, I know a friend of mine uh, posted some of the pictures uh, online this weekend and it, it actually is really really cool um you know you uh, design your own float and and take a picture and send it in and it is uh, intended to be a a peewee parade and so people have got lego floats uh people have got these these teeny tiny like tonka trucks decorated like like uh you know trucks that uh, you know you'll see moving down here on main street on the fourth of july with the flags hanging out and, oh i love it and, and things like that and, and people have uh have done little clay horse and wagons and things like that. But then other folks, I did see a couple of folks actually had their, their cars decorated. So it wasn't quite so peewee, but you know, you take a picture of it and it, it gets shrunken down to the same size as that, that Lego float. So it, it is really, really cool. You can actually head on to uh, the city's website <clears throat> and you can, uh, you can check out some of the entries there. Uh, I do want to go back a little bit for the, uh, I want to remind folks for the, um, the patriotic tour, if you're going to decorate your house or your business, uh, the deadline to enter is June 30th. So that's tomorrow. So you've got to get that entry in, uh, real soon, uh, for the, for the peewee parade, the entry deadline is actually today. It, it's midnight tonight, actually 1159. So if it's midnight, I guess it would be tomorrow, right? So deadline is today. Good news is now you You've got something to do with the kids today. You can spend the afternoon decorating your Pee Wee float and take a picture, send it in. Again, I'm going to post uh, the the website there. Really, really cute. Um, but yeah, you can work on that with the kids today. Get it posted and uh, and then yeah, you can you can peruse everybody's. Uh, uh, everybody else's pictures so that you can get a little inspiration there voting starts tomorrow so you get them submitted today and voting starts tomorrow that's right you on the peewee parade you actually get to vote and, and so uh so folks in and around the city get to vote on on the winners of that peewee parade and then winners will be announced on friday july 3rd on the city's social media accounts so deadline is today voting starts tomorrow and then on Friday, the, the winners are announced. So voting will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, yeah, like I said, you can already uh, check out some of the entrants on the city's website. I just posted it on the Facebook live feed. And, and so we've got the, the, the 4th of July patriotic tour where you decorate your house, your business. We got the peewee parade and something that a lot of us were worried about. Yes, there will be fireworks here in Santa Clarita this year. Uh, this from the city's website, and, and I took it directly from the city's website. The show will go on. After months of lockdown and restrictions, the city is excited to announce that the annual fireworks show, Spirit of America, will take place with a dazzling display of lights. And if you've seen it before, which how could you have missed it? You know that it is a dazzling display. I'm always impressed. We do a, a really good job with the fireworks here in the city. Oh, it's awesome. I'm, I'm happy to hear that they're going to be doing it. Yeah, and it's you always get that. Uh, it's kind of like... Um, uh, gosh, what, maybe Guns N' Roses November Rain. You, you know, you, you get that crescendo and the dip and you think it's done, but no, it comes right back and, and you get an extra three, four minutes of fireworks. It, it's, it's a really nice long display. But uh, 
Anyway, Spirit of America will take place with the dazzling display of lights illuminating the sky over Westfield Town Center Mall. The fireworks show will begin at 9.15, and uh, those of you that are, are frequenters of the fireworks show know that they are pretty punctual. You know, they get it up uh, sometime between 9.15, 9.20 every year, right on time. Details are still being finalized, so please stay tuned on the city's social media pages for more information. So, uh... Uh, we will actually check in with the mayor tomorrow. You know, mayor's coming in tomorrow on Tuesday like he does every Tuesday. Um, uh, quick reminder, if you've got questions for the mayor, get them to me. Um, but that's one of the questions that I'll be asking is if he's got any more details on the uh, uh, the fireworks. Because some of the details that I had heard is that they're encouraging people to stay in their cars. Obviously, you know, you don't want the thousands of people gathered on uh, Valencia Boulevard like we normally have. We want people to stay distant from each other. And I did hear that, that the mall parking lot might be closed so that might complicate things a little bit um, so we'll we'll talk to the mayor and, and get some uh, some details tomorrow on that what do you think Shane what do you are you planning on going out of town you doing Bass Lake this year you know we are doing Bass Lake this year but it's going to be a little bit later in the month so not over 4th uh -huh. of July so I'm gonna end up calling my dad and finding out what he's doing because we're probably just gonna plan something together and, <laughs> and go from there so keep there it local go. keep it real close in the family and have a good time but there there we go. We've talked about everything all over the valley. The, what's going on for Fourth of July? Fourth uh, of July. What about you? What are you doing? So I, I think uh, normally what we do actually uh, for the last several years is we've always celebrated at my mom's place of work. Uh, you know, my mom just retired from the Bank of Santa Clarita, and they always did the coolest celebration in the world. I mean, the, their branch is right across the street from the mall, so you can't get better real estate than that. Oh, yeah. They, they close off the parking lot, and it's for families uh, uh, of employees only, and then they, they bring in the In-N-Out truck, and, oh, and they just nice. sling as many burgers as you can eat. And, man, my nephew takes that as a challenge every year <laughs> <laughs> and so typically yeah what we do is uh, uh we hang out do a little swimming and then head on over there in the in the afternoon and uh and we would have in and out there's always somebody that makes homemade ice cream uh, people bring cookies and music and then as the the night gets dark people start to settle in and one of the things i always like to do is uh, for my nephews and nieces i always bring a little box of uh, uh of those those snap caps you know just throw them on the ground oh yeah it's hot, it, yep. you know. so uh, they enjoy throwing those back and forth at each other nice and safe uh, um and so <laughs> so they're not doing that well one uh, the bank is not doing that this year just doing that. the responsible thing yep. and two my mom doesn't work there anymore so that made yeah. it an easy decision so i think we're just gonna gonna drag the bar barbecue out a little bit longer and and i think what the plan is this year is for a, a few of us to stand around the barbecue and and ask the question over and over uh, you want to you want to get in the car and drive over there and, and see if we can find a place to park so i think that's <laughs> what we're doing for the fourth of july just going to kind of take it easy you know that, that's uh, this year that's kind of been the underlying theme Let, let's just let's just take it easy let's let's ride this one out there's been a whole new emphasis placed on being able to find uh not necessarily comfort or solace, but a little bit of that, but just to be able to do more in your own homes with the people around you. Yeah. Not everybody always has family members or people close to them, but for those that do, it really makes you appreciate and also, uh, yeah, just appreciate the great, appreciate and take into account the value of just spending that time with your family members. It's a very simple thing to do, but at the same time, it, it doesn't have to be anything grandiose. Sometimes we conflict having a holiday, meaning we have to go do something nice and outside the house in order to fully have a good time or make it really count or something like that when at the end of the day it's more about the emotion that you're putting into it and the time that you're spending with the people so right. it doesn't really have to be anything if you just get that barbecue out spend a couple hours standing around then it could be just as good of a time so Absolutely. it's been a good refocusing and relearning of that i think i am gonna have a hard time not having the soundtrack of major league baseball going on in the background that's always a big part of the fourth fourth of july holiday but you, you're gonna miss joe buck joe buck call <laughs> That's what you're going to be missing. Always. I love me some Joe Buck. Are I you know. a Joe Buck hater? No, I'm not a Joe okay, Buck hater. Okay. It's just it's just funny. The It won't feel <laughs> truly American without Joe Buck in the background. I mean, he has been doing it since the, what, the late 90s? So, yeah. I mean, it is, it is quite the staple. Right. But 
Just put on uh, put on some Vin Scully. Put on an old broadcast of him. He'll he'll you know, fill the space. I heard somebody no talking problem. about how they had that how Vin Scully was on three different channels the, uh, the other day. It's funny, right before you know, Vin building up to his retirement a couple of years ago, I kept telling my kids, you know what, you're gonna come here and you're gonna listen to the Dodger game because when when you have kids and when you have grandkids, you're gonna tell them, you know, I used to listen to the ball games. I used to listen to the greatest of all time, and and I remember Vin. And now my kids are going, we can't we can't get Vin off of the TV now. <laughs> So with all the replays that they're running, it's it's crazy. You know you're a legend when, as a radio broadcaster, there are games that are replayed just because you talked so well about it. Not because a, a, a player did anything good or the game was any particular type of great. It was just his way with words was so excellent that it's remembered to this day. So I think that's a, that's a good sign that you made it. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we truly were blessed for a good long time here in Los Angeles. You know, people talk about Vin Scully and, and Chick Hearn. You probably don't remember Chick Hearn, the, the voice of the Lakers for so long. And Not uh, as much. I wish, though. I've heard yeah. his iconic lines. Oh, absolutely. And... Uh, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. People talk so much about Vin Scully, and and they forget what an amazing Spanish language broadcaster we have in LA with Jaime Carrín. He is uh, just an incredible broadcaster in his own right. Learned a lot of his stuff from from Vin. Well, whatever you do this Fourth of July, I want to make sure that you stay safe and and healthy. Enjoy your time with your family. I know. Some folks do get a little antsy and, and, and want to put on a little show of their own, but, uh, you know, be careful. There's there's folks out there that can only count to eight now because uh, because they played around a little bit too much on 4th of July. You don't want that to be you or, God forbid, your kids, right? That one just hit <laughs> engineer's eight, shame there. Eight fingers. <laughs> right, eight right. fingers. Exactly. You concerned me. I thought you meant <laughs> a few less family members. So. Oh, <laughs> Clarify. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, with the seriousness of the pandemic, you, you had me going there, man. No, you got me. You no, pumped sorry, the, me well, again. Was the was the football player, the NFL player, uh, a couple years ago that lost a couple fingers on Fourth of July. I, I don't remember his name, but we did. Uh, uh, there was a football player that I lost can't, a couple fingers. Yeah. I can't remember who it was recently, but didn't Jason Pierre-Paul go <laughs> his entire career with only three fingers, yeah. if I remember correctly? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Relevant information for you. <laughs> enjoy the holiday. Uh, celebrate. Enjoy some time with your family. Enjoy some time in the city. If you're going to decorate your house, you, you got to get it done by tomorrow. If you're going to decorate for the Pee Wee Parade, you got to get that done today. So maybe spend some time with the kids putting together a float for the Pee Wee Parade. And for more information on the fireworks show that's coming up in Valencia, we, as in the KHTS, we, we're going to be finding out more information about that. And we'll definitely get something out there for you. So we'll, we'll give you some updates today looking at our Facebook page, our website, hometownstation.com, and we'll get something up. Ah, we've always got stuff up. Stuff up first. You can also check Check out the city's website at santa-clarita.com or uh, like Shane said, go to hometownstation.com. We're going to take that quick commercial break and when we come back, we will be talking with our show's licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Debray. For more information on how COVID-19 continues to affect our valley, go to hometownstation.com and click on the red banner. It's that big red banner as soon as you log on, hometownstation.com. There you're going to find tips on the economy, health updates, and much, much more. You are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Hey, Dutton Plumbing, it's Eric. Son, it's Mother. We need to talk about me running for president. People are telling me I should run, like Ernesto. Uh, he said, who better to clean up all the crap in Washington than me, a plumber's mother? Wait, hold it. Who's Ernesto? And Erica, the girl downstairs, said Dutton Plumbing's drain clearing saved her money and protected her from a scary situation. Now, isn't that exactly what people want in a president? I think she could help me with that Milano vote. I, I, I think you mean millennials, Mom, not Milano. I was thinking about cookies. I'm hungry. Well, if you're serious about running for president, Mom, maybe Dutton Plumbing can help sponsor you? I need a couple of hundred grand for a facelift, a boob lift. <sighs> Sorry, Mom, you're breaking up. <laughs> Dutton Plumbing. Get Dutton Plumbing's 73-buck drain clearing. It flows or it's free with a money-back guarantee. Details at DuttonPlumbing.com. Hi, this is Bob Sheritz with The Way Out Recovery SCV, reminding you that during these unprecedented times, addiction and mental health do not take a break. If you or someone you love are struggling, please give us a call at 661-296-4444. We are open and here to help you during this time. Thanks. 
Comfort Keepers provides your loved one with loving in-home care. Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers in-home care. Our caregivers can help you in your own home, enhancing independence, creating safety and comfort. Our Comfort Keepers provide companionship, meal preparation, medication reminders, assistance with personal care, and even transportation to doctor's appointments. If someone you love can use a helping hand at home, visit comfortkeepers.com. Or call 287-4200. You just had an accident. You're okay, but worried your car will never look the same. Your vehicle may be the second biggest investment you'll ever make. Give it the care it deserves at Body Shop 661. Hi, this is Caesar from Body Shop 661. If you had an accident, you get to choose the auto body facility you want. Our full collision repair center works with all vehicles, foreign and domestic, and we handle all insurance companies. Body Shop 661 off Ruther behind Home Depot. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, real estate developers, realtors, contractors, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker is one of Santa Clarita's leaders, consistently listed as one of our most influential. When everything is on the line and you need legal counseling, visit HackerLawGroup.com. Your building sign is essential to getting customers to your location. Feathers can help you get your business noticed. Feathers, now in a new larger space with plenty of parking. They walk you through each phase of your project with special attention to detail and quality. Feathers will provide you with a sign that you can be proud of. Your sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Visit Feathers online at feathersigns.com or go to Feathers' brand new bigger location at 26017 Huntington Drive off Rye Canyon or call 298 -9 your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. We are joined now by our show's official licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Debray. Christina is a, uh, a remarkable young lady with an incredible story of resilience and determination herself. She uh, grew up uh, in a situation that we're all kind of living right now. She grew up socially distanced. She grew up uh, dealing with uh, uh, staving off infection and, and things like that. Diagnosed early on in life with cystic fibrosis. Christina uh, had probably a, a great reason to just lay back and and uh, and say, woe is me about the, the deal that she had been dealt. But instead, she took those lemons and turned them into so much more than lemonade, turned them into a lemon pepper chicken and lemon meringue pie. She took her difficult experience, the trauma and, and difficulties that she grew up with, and, and uh, turned around and became a trauma and resilience specialist, which is something that uh, that is really coming in handy to a lot of folks these days. And Christina went and graduated from Cal State Northridge and Pepperdine University. She practices uh, marriage and family therapy right here in Valencia. She studied extensively things like trauma, phobias, performance enhancement, attachment disorders, suicide prevention, grief and child and adolescent interventions. She works with, uh, with children, teens, couples, adults. She's got more than 18 years experience uh, working with medical professionals, organizations, patients, schools, parents, business professionals. Christina, good morning. Welcome in. Good morning. It is good to have you. You know, Christina, we've been talking a lot about uh, trauma lately uh, and depression, anxiety, and uh, it makes sense. A lot of folks are going through a lot of things right now. Um, we've talked about symptoms and treatments, but there are things that we can do to kind of prevent the onset of problems, right? I'm, I'm talking about self-care. You know, a lot of us have stayed at home for a, a long, long time and you know, some of us have gained a little bit of weight. Some of us have developed some bad habits. How important is self-care and, and getting back into things? 
You know, I, I think that self-care is one of those things that um, on the surface, people may look at it and think that it's um, superficial or selfish. It, it's very easy to um, neglect our self-care by saying, hey, there's other things that take precedence. Um, and, and, you know, there are important things. So, for example, it, it, it's this conversation that we had before about the putting our own oxygen mask on first. So it's, hey, the kids need to be fed. So, you know, no, it's, I'm not going to go wash my hair or, or put on makeup before going and feeding the kids. However, <clears throat> the opposite really is true. Um, Self-care really refers to anything that we do that is getting our physical, emotional, spiritual needs met. And that can look different for everyone. It, it, you know, what, what one person's A-plus self-care regimen is, you know, might be <laughs> toxic for another person. So, you know, really it's about what works for you. So when we prioritize our self-care, so when we are, um, you know, for, let's talk, for example, about physical self-care. You take the time to um, make a, a grocery list that's healthy. You make the time to make a meal that's healthy for yourself. You focus on taking a shower, um, getting a haircut, doing your hair. Um, for women, that can be doing um, makeup and nails. You know, it really, that engages your parasympathetic nervous system. And that can help you feel more at ease, more capable, more resilient, more able to deal with whatever the day has to, uh, you know, whatever the day is given you to confront with, um, to contend with. And so uh, the best way to explain it is self-care is like recharging the battery on your phone so that you can um, use as many applications as you need and, um, you know, do whatever you need to do functionally to, to be successful. So during times of difficulty, which, you know, 2020 has been one difficulty and one trauma after another, and even, you know, before 2020, the second half of 2019 was just so draining is, you know, everything that's happened, every big trauma is a hit on our central nervous system and it's a hit to us and so it can become a lot more difficult to engage in self-care because um, we're dealing with depression anxiety ptsd trauma related disorders um, and you know we can have a lot of shame and guilt we can be catatonic it can feel hard to get out of bed um, we're coping by eating or drinking or using substances or whatever it is and so sometimes just a very simple hey you know, I'm going to make sure that I start my day by taking a shower and putting on a fresh pair of clothes and, you know, brushing my hair can really help um, sort of frame things for you of, hey, I'm, I am worth my time and I, I am capable. Yeah, that can be, that can be so important. You mentioned a key phrase. Uh, to get yourself ready for whatever the day is going to deal you. You know, oftentimes, you know, we feel like, well, I don't have to go into the office, so why do I need a shower? Why do I need to put on my makeup? But then it just kind of, it just lowers your game a little bit, and, and you feel fine, you, you feel good, but then when things do get stressful, you might just have a little bit less patience. You might not be ready for everything that's going to come your way because you're still going to have that day, whether you, uh, whether you like it or not, whether you invite it or not. So, yeah, self-care is, is really, really important. You know, a lot of us, like I said at the beginning, are struggling, Christina, and I want to make sure that folks know that uh, they've got someone that they can reach out to. You know, to, uh, talk to your loved ones, talk to your friends, make sure that you're, you're getting the care that you need, and... Uh, uh, and should you need a little bit more care, make sure that you reach out to your health care provider. You can also reach out to Christina directly. Uh, you know, Christina is such a great person to talk to, and, uh, and she's got a number of different therapies that, that work for a lot of people. Her phone number is 
4857 You can also find her at her website, ChristinaDebray.com. That's Christina with a K D E B R E E dot com. Christina, thanks so much. We appreciate you coming in. We will talk to you again tomorrow. It's time for us to check the local and national news stories and the latest updates right now, but we will be back. On the other side, we'll be talking to a couple of folks from College of the Canyon Center for Early Childhood Education. You are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. It's Rick Garcia from my radio show with Rick Garcia here on KHTS. Man, it seems like it's been forever since we sat down in a restaurant and enjoyed a meal with our family and friends. A lot of our local businesses are working hard, getting ready to reopen, including restaurants. Ultimately, it's up to our local restaurants to come up with safety plans moving forward. But we can help too. Plan on no more than an hour of dining out. If we don't linger, it allows more turnover for the restaurant, which in turn provides more business for them and more tips for servers who are on the front line. In other words, it's a win-win. Together, we can create a new normal for Santa Clarita that's safe and enjoyable. Yes, Dunkin' is open. The continued stay-at-home orders have been rough on all of us, but Dunkin' is trying to make things just a little bit better. There are many ways to get your Dunkin' fix. You can carry out at both locations, or you can drive through at Canyon Country, or get curbside service at the Bouquet Canyon Dunkin'. Both offer Grubhub and Postmates delivery and are open till 6 p.m. Don't forget, use your Dunkin' app for On The Go to order, pay, and accumulate points. Dunkin' cares about the SCV. It's allergy season again. You've tried it all, yet your sinuses continue to be a problem. Try something different, something holistic, something that will really work. Acupuncture. Kathleen Keneally is Santa Clarita's acupuncture and Nate specialist. She's been treating many of your neighbors and their children for allergies, sinuses, headaches, and pain. Find out how acupuncture can improve the quality of your life. Call Kathleen Keneally for a free phone consultation. 252-4100. 252-4100. Acupuncture. It really works. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. The coronavirus has put us in a position of creating a new normal. Family Law at Home understands. Their goal is to meet you in the safest place possible, and these days that might be in your own home in a virtual meeting. Family Law at Home will provide you with immediate advice on your family law matters, such as divorce cases, child custody disputes, and domestic violence. It's as easy as going to familylawathome.com. You'll choose your own consultation date and be in immediate contact with one of their esteemed attorneys. Family Law at Home handles the legal aspect while you and your family navigate the new chapter in your lives. Go to familylawathome.com. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 10 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. A major ruling from the nation's high court. I'm Rich Dennison, Fox News. The Supreme Court today overturning a Louisiana law that would have forced the closure of most abortion clinics in the state 
by requiring doctors who perform the procedure to have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals. The main argument during this case was whether or not that was an undue burden, whether it would shut down clinics, leaving women in Louisiana with very few, maybe only one abortion clinic they could actually visit in state to get this procedure done. And so uh, what the court has decided, 5-4, the liberal wing of the court stuck together. Uh, the Chief Justice John Roberts also sided with them on some of the main points in their opinion. Fox's Shannon Bream. The Supreme Court today also ruling against four federal death row inmates who sought to stop their executions. The inmates questioned the drug protocol the government plans to use for the lethal injections. The federal government wants to begin the four executions next month. Lawmakers are back on Capitol Hill with a number of items to work on ahead of the 4th of July recess. Much of the week in the Senate is expected to be devoted to the National Defense Authorization Act, an annual Pentagon policy bill usually passed with bipartisan majorities. But this year's bill in the Senate includes a provision requiring the Pentagon to rename several military installations honoring Confederate generals. The amendment has support from some Republicans, but President Trump says he won't agree to it. The House, meantime, is scheduled to take up a major infrastructure bill, a $1.5 trillion measure Democratic supporters say will create new jobs, combat climate change, and rebuild urban, suburban, and rural communities. Fox's Jared Halpern on Capitol Hill. Two police officers in Tulsa, Oklahoma, were shot and critically wounded on the city's east side this morning. Police arresting the suspected gunman, 32-year-old David where after a nearly seven hour manhunt. America is listening to Fox News. From faulty breakers to broken windows to leaky pipes, roofs, and water heaters, homes and businesses around the country can't work until the pros do. That's why Lowe's created credit programs that work for pros. With everyday 5% savings on eligible purchases, plus through October 31st, 60 days promotional financing on your Lowe's business account or extended terms on eligible account receivables. Learn more in-store or online at Lowe'sforpros.com. Putting money back in your pocket. Just one more reason Lowe's is the new home for pros. Subject to credit approval, U.S. only. Hey, if you're looking to cut costs and free up some cash on a monthly basis, start today with Pure Talk USA. Now, the average family of four is saving over $800 a year on cell phone service by switching to Pure Talk USA. Now, every plan includes unlimited talk and text. And by the way, it just starts at 20 bucks. So switch to Pure Talk today. Just dial pound 250, keyword Pure Radio. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. You'll have the option to receive a one-time auto-dialed text from Pure Talk USA. Despite a rising number of coronavirus cases in about 17 states, some states are easing COVID-19 mitigation restrictions today. Kentucky will begin phase three today, allowing bars and restaurants to reopen at 50% capacity. Public pools could reopen too. In New Hampshire, they'll allow indoor movie theaters to resume showing films and performing arts centers can reopen too. New Jersey reopens shopping malls with stores limited to 50% capacity. In New York and Rhode Island, the day camps for kids can start operating. Eben Brown, Fox News. States seeing a dramatic rise of new infections are rolling back some of those measures. Texas is closing bars and limiting restaurant capacity. Bars in eight California counties have been ordered to close, and several Florida beaches are closing ahead of the long holiday weekend. The European Union is finalizing a list of countries whose citizens will be allowed back into Europe in the coming days, but Americans aren't expected to be among them. The EU is reopening its borders to some countries who have been able to keep down coronavirus infection rates, but point to growing numbers in the U.S. as a reason to keep Americans out of Europe for now. China is responding to U.S.-imposed travel restrictions. China saying it will impose restrictions on visas for some Americans after the U.S. made a similar move last week. It's not clear who's going to be targeted. The Chinese foreign ministry only saying it'll be people who've, quote, performed badly on matters related to Hong Kong. The penalties are the latest to emerge in a dispute over that city. China is drafting a new security law for Hong Kong. The U.S. says the legislation will limit freedom of speech. Beach. Simon Owen, Fox News. The United Nations World Food Program says coronavirus has pushed millions of people into hunger. The organization is asking for nearly $5 billion to help about 138 million people in 83 countries. I'm Rich Dennison, and this is Fox News. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California.
The Oasis treatment at the Ivy Day Spa begins with a gentle exfoliation, then rinsed away in warm showers. You're painted with a soothing aloe vera, shea butter, and coconut oil body mask. Then travel through the warm hydro cape chambers. The relaxation chamber completes your Oasis body moisturizing treatment with a pH balancing mist and a warm cup of tea. Feel refreshed, hydrated, and relaxed. Pamper yourself. The Ivy Day Spa. Town Center Drive. This is Bradley Gross from Santa Clarita Grocery. Santa Clarita Grocery serves fresh groceries to families, individuals, and those experiencing homelessness. At Santa Clarita Grocery, out of every dollar donated, a full 99 cents goes directly to the needs being addressed. As an all-volunteer-led organization, we operate on a 1% overhead, receiving no government funding for our operations in the community, resulting in us being one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. If you're looking to support the good for our community, please consider part partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery. What is donated is specifically kept in the Santa Clarita Valley, helping over 3,000 families, including five other community charities. Please visit our website, santaclaritagrocery.org, or visit us on social media or call us at 425-7575. That's 425-7575. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker has been ranked the 15th most influential person in the entire Santa Clarita Valley in 2010 by the Santa Clarita Valley Business Journal. When everything is on the line, call the Hacker Law Group. At iLead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Eilid Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options, too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit eileadaguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. Eilid Schools. Free to think. Inspired to lead. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. My next two guests are with the College of the Canyons Early Childhood Education Center. Cindy Stevens has spent over half her life dedicated uh, to her passion of creating an educational system that honors and supports children in their lifelong journey of learning. She's currently a full-time faculty member of the Early Childhood Education Department at College of the Canyons. She's been a full-time has been full-time faculty since 2001. In addition to her work in the ECE department at COC, Cindy is the program director for foster and kin 
Kinship Care Education, California Community College Early Childhood Educators President, and serves as a consultant on the LA County Partnerships for the Education, Articulation, and Collaboration of Higher Education. That would be PEACH for short, which is an advocacy group that is tasked with elevating the field of early childhood. Cindy echoes Pastor Chuck Swindoll's saying, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And boy, are those wise words as, uh, as we attack the issues of today. And... Monica Marshall is the program director at College of the Canyon Center for Early Childhood Education. She began her journey as an early childhood ed educator at the College of the Canyons 28 years ago. First as an assistant teacher, then master teacher, and for the past 14 years as a director. Monica was also a certified California mentor teacher and mentor director for 23 years. Monica is proud to work with an outstanding, with the outstanding colleagues and considers her ECE team part of her family. Monica has also been an ECE adjunct professor at the College of the Canyons and has a passion for inspiring students experiential learning throughout their coursework. Monica graduated with an associate of science degree with honors in childhood development at COC. She earned her BA and MA from Pacific Oaks College. Monica has been a member of the National Association for the Education of Young Children since 1990 and has served several positions on the board. Monica loves nature, hiking, bike riding, reading, and sewing. Most of all, though, she loves spending time with her family. Ladies, welcome in. It's good to have you. Thank you for having us, Matt. Thank you. We're so glad you could join us. You know, you guys know that the uh, the Center for Early Ho Early Childhood Education at COC is uh, is famous in our in our valley. So many people know and, and love the program that you guys run out there. But Cindy, let's let's go ahead and start with you. Uh, let's let's talk about the adult students who are interested in pursuing a degree in early childhood education. What do they learn about in their course of study? That's a great question, Matt. Um, so the course of study that they'll be embarking upon at College of the Canyons involves both book learning, we call it academic learning, and the application of what they're learning um, in, in that academic forum that will help them in their journey as early childhood professionals to support and nurture children, their families, and to recognize their connection to the community they serve. So they engage in planning and implementing learning experiences that are developmentally and culturally appropriate for children zero to eight. And they learn how to support both the group of children and the individuality within that group as all children are individuals within the group context. And in the eight courses that they take, so there are eight specific courses that are required to either earn their degree or certificate, uh, we infuse equitable practices as those are so important. It's such an important part of being an early childhood educator, understanding cultural, racial, uh, ethnicity, sexual identity, gender identity, all of the things that make up our human identities. So that's uh, that's in a nutshell what, what they study while they're with us. All right, so they get theory and practice. So you talked about how uh, students work toward either their degree or their certificate. What's the difference between the two? So the degree requires 60 units and it's general ed. So they have the eight courses which make up 24 of those units and then they have six, 36 units of general ed courses. That would then earn them a degree, an associate's degree, um, in child development or early childhood education. And if they just want a certificate, we have several different choices. Uh, the one is a preschool certificate, and that's just, they just take those eight courses. And what we find is that we do have students that come in here thinking that they're only going to take the eight courses, and then they get so excited that they realize that they want to go on to higher education, so they complete their associates, they go on to a bachelor's, they go on to a master's. And um, in some, the questions that you're going to ask me later, I just I'm going to infuse it here. We actually have a faculty right now who started um, at the Child Development Center as a child here. She went to our adult program. She left us and she can, finished her master's degree, and she now teaches in our department. Oh, that's, that's terrific. How, that's how much of a family we are. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. And then I'm assuming that uh, there's a difference in in career options when 
and you have a certificate versus a degree, uh, your associates or your, your bachelor's? Absolutely. Um, the, the higher, the more education you have, the more opportunities that are afforded you in the field. Um, so you can become a director, you can become a, a Head Start. Our Head Start programs, which are wonderful programs, require that you have a bachelor's degree to work with children. So, you know, oftentimes students come in, they, they want to work with children, they don't really know their direction, uh, specifically what they want to do with children. And so as they spend the time with us, they kind of articulate that they, it becomes more apparent to them what they want to do, which then shapes what they decide to do in terms of pursuing other educational opportunities. Yeah, that happens a lot of times when uh, when you start studying something, you really don't know what you want to do or why, but you know what you're interested in, and then as you get that, uh, that practical, hands-on experience, you learn uh, a little bit more what you love and what you're truly passionate about. Absolutely. So how does the Center for Early Childhood Education and the academic department collaborate and, and support what's taught in the academic classes? So the wonderful thing is, is as Monica and I are sitting here with each other, we're, and we're masked, we're being safe, um, that Monica and I actually started here at College of the Canyons. Uh, she started a year earlier than me, but we were co-teachers uh, in the children's program. And so the relationships that uh, have evolved because of that help us to really create such a nice and syn um uh, symbiotic uh, opportunity for our students. But what happens is that uh, the lab school or the Center for Early Childhood Education is where our students apply what they're learning in their courses. And so many of our assignments involve that they observe teachers, they observe children, they observe, uh, they look at the environment to see what creates good learning opportunities for children. They interview, Monica, uh, some of our other center staff, uh, our other assistant director uh, get interviewed a lot about what they do and why they do it, and kind of to inspire our students to think about things um, out differently. Um, and then we also have opportunities for students to implement what they're learning. So they might be doing learning experiences or group times or all different kinds of things in preparation for them to become early childhood professionals. So th this is where they're able to do that mostly, but we also have established partnerships outside, um, other child development centers in our community that we build those relationships. Our department's been growing, and so we need to continue to have those types of partnerships, and so our students do some of their work there as well. And what I love about that is that we each inform each other. So when our students are out in the community, they have different ways of being and they inform us and we have an advisory board. We meet twice a year and at that advisory board is all of our partners help, helping us to shape our program to meet the needs of their future employees as well as we help to shape them in terms of what our best practices in working with children and families. So you mentioned other centers. Uh, there are other options out there, um, but can you make the case for uh, COC? Why would someone choose College of the Canyons to begin their career preparation in the profession of early childhood? Well, in order to work in a, in a center, you do have to have very minimal 12 units of early childhood. That right. minimal uh, way that you can enter the field. But um, the, the faculty in our, and so in response to that, Matt, it's not that they could earn that at another community partner, so they couldn't go to a preschool and earn their degree. It would, mm. they have to, it's only, they can only earn that here or, you know, elsewhere in other colleges. It's, we're not the only college that offers it. But, right. Um, but the faculty in our department have very diverse experiences purposefully. Uh, we hire for that. We want our students to experience lots of different um, ways that children are served in our community. So we have a faculty that works with special, the special ed population. We have a faculty that was in military child care. We have a faculty that um, works in, with school age. So we have varied experiences and we pride ourselves in that. Um, 
This career is a career that is dedicated to serving children and families, and so it's important for us to provide lots of diverse experiences because each human that we come in contact with is an individual. Even if they belong to a group, they are still an individual within that group, and that's part of our work that we need to really hone in on. And I think that we do that in our department, in our academic department, because our philosophy is, is that learning is a journey and that learning is best when two or more people are engaged in discovery and pondering in, in, in exchange of ideas. Uh, so uh, we believe that learning is reciprocal. And as I mentioned, we have lots of different experiences. And so our students get, get that opportunity to work with lots of different faculty and hear their experiences as they're delivering the content in their courses. Um, so uh, we have really high standards in our program when it comes to the expectations of our students, but we have a tremendous amount of support in our courses. Uh, our faculty is prided in taking professional development opportunities. Currently, we're learning how to be more effective online teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so proud of the faculty. We spend a lot of our time outside of our paid, uh, our paid work to talk with each other. Uh, we have this, we developed during this pandemic this community of practice. So once a week, all of the faculty in our department get together on Zoom and we talk about our practices and support one another, and we feel that that's a big part of what we give to our students as well. That's terrific. I know the Early Childhood Education Center out there is, is known for providing tremendous experiential learning opportunities for your little ones. It's great to hear that your adult learners are, are getting that as well. You know, that's oftentimes the knock against a, a college-level ed education is uh, that it, it's not as experiential and, and you tend to just get lecture all day, so I'm glad to hear that you're providing that. So how does a potential student find more, uh, find out more about the course of study? Who would they contact if, uh, if they're listening to us and, and saying, yeah, I, I might be interested in a career in early childhood education? So our college website, uh, we have uh, in the A to Z listing, there is a place for early childhood education. They can click on that. It has all the information about the early childhood uh, academic department. It also has a link to the center, but they also have their own web page. And um, currently, our department chair is Jennifer Paris, and they can reach her at Jennifer period Paris at canyons.edu, but that's also if they go to the webpage and they look under faculty, it's all linked so they can contact any of us for questions. Jennifer is the one that they would go to as department chair, but as mentioned earlier when I talked about our community of practice, our st we, are, we have an open door policy. Our students can contact us. We are here to help them and support them. Uh, there's a lot of variance in pursuing the field of early childhood. So we have a great counseling department on our campus that can help them with their general ed. But really, it's good for them to contact us in our department to talk about specifically what their goals are in terms of working with children, because there's lots of different paths that they can take, and we can help identify that for them. Uh, also, we're working in our institution on guided pathways, and that will become clearer for students what their pathways can be. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, we're here to help and support them in any way, shape, or form that we can, and they can contact each and every one of us. Even They can even contact Monica for things that, you know, about the center, so. Yeah, and we will we'll get to Monica in, in just a minute. I just wanted to ask you to repeat that uh, uh, email address. What was Jennifer, and can you spell Jennifer's last name? I sure can. It's P-A-R-I-S. So what's her email address again? J J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R dot P-A-R-I-S at Canyons dot E-D-U. Perfect. Jennifer dot Paris at Canyons e e dot E-D-U. And, mm -hmm. and she can get you more information about getting involved in, in studying early childhood education out there at COC. Now, I do want to talk about the, the center and, and the amazing services that you provide for the kids and, and the families out there. I want to talk to Monica about that, but we do have to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, uh, we will be speaking more with Cindy Stevens and Monica Marshall from College of the Canyons Center for Early Childhood 
childhood education. You are listening to SCBI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Have you heard about Assistance League Retail Store? For a good time and a great deal and bargains that are an amazing steal, there are friendly volunteers ready to share a smile. So come on in and stay a while. We take donations on gently used goods and proceeds from our sales stay in the neighborhood. So for a great buy and a special find, come visit our store anytime. Assistance League Resale Store located at 24369 Main Street in downtown Newhall. At SCVI, we don't just prepare your child for the real world. We empower them to imagine and build the world they want for themselves. Our tuition-free TK-12 charter school combines project-based learning with extracurriculars from robotics to theater to sports to give your child boundless opportunities to explore who they are. Located just off the 5 Freeway in West Santa Clarita Valley, SEVI has the only international baccalaureate program in the area. For enrollment information, including open enrollment options, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. Your hometown station. Life takes us in different directions sometimes, and we may not always have computer access for breaking news. KHTS has a solution. Text alerts. Breaking news you need to know about fast. Freeway closed? We'll text you directly. Emergency police activity in the Santa Clarita Valley? We'll text you. Sign up now for text alerts at hometownstation.com. KHTS has your back. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Hi, I'm Miles McNamara, Certified Senior Advisor and Owner of Comfort Keepers and Home Care. Our caregivers help you in your own home. A Comfort Keeper can provide companionship, meal preparation, medication monitoring, assistance with personal care, transportation to doctor appointments, all enhancing your independence and safety and the comfort and privacy of your own home. So if you or someone you love could use a helping hand at home, call Comfort Keepers at 287-4200. That's 287-4200. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies as well as board certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. For more information, call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. Hi, I'm Eric Goldhurst, Head of Operations for Burger King North America. Throughout this time, we've taken steps to take care of our guests. And since we know many of your jobs have been affected by this crisis, we want to help make sure you're taken care of too. If you are looking for work, we are hiring. And there's a spot on our team for you. We know that we'll get through this together as long as we keep taking care of each other. For more information, call 253-3283. That's 253-3283. Beep, 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 beep. Go! Good morning. My name is Shane Cutchell, giving you a look at traffic, keeping you updated throughout the day, no matter what time it is. Now, taking a look at that traffic, looking at the 14 northbound freeway, there's a little bit of traffic there, believe it or not, just a little bit as you come away from the 5 northbound freeway, where the 5 and 14 split away from one another. Taking a look at the CHP incident report, no major incidents there, and fortunately, nothing but green in every other direction on the freeway, so if you have somewhere to be, I would get going. Do it right now. Let's take a look at weather in just one second. Traffic brought to you by the law firm of Owen Patterson Owen, helping Santa Clarita drivers recover from life-changing accidents for over three decades. Owen Patterson Owen, encouraging you to drive safely. Visit opolaw.com. Taking a look at weather now, what a relief it's been the past few days. Currently 66 degrees in New Hall, 69 degrees in Valencia, and 68 degrees in Canaan Country. Highs today in the high 70s with lows in the mid 50s. Warming up tomorrow with temperatures in the high 80s. Now let's get back to the Eye in the Valley show with Matt Watson. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Well, all right. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I am your host, Matt Watson, and we're talking this morning with Cindy Stevens and Monica Marshall from the College of the Canyons Center for Early Childhood Education. 
Monica, we uh, we were talking before the break about the amazing education that you guys provide for uh, future teachers of uh, early childhood education. Let's talk about the center itself and the amazing program that you guys have there. What's the center's mission as a college laboratory school? Well, thank you, Matt. Um, the center supports the college's mission and models those essential workforce skills for students that are studying ECE and collaborates with uh, all of the ECE faculty to ensure that students have access and they're successful and that they're engaged. Um, we have children here at the center from 12 months old until they go to kindergarten. So we're able to look at where the students are according to what the classes are and their assignments and uh, be able to provide that environment and that learning experience to connect them to the outcomes for their assignments. Mm, that's terrific. So uh, we were talking to Cindy earlier about uh, the adult education. How does the center support the ECE academic program and, and student studies? Okay. The center, we really work in partnership with the ECE faculty and we're supporting those learning outcomes, all of those connections. At the lab school, we provide that connection between the theory, child growth and development, best practices and implementation, not only for their coursework, but the real life experiences um, provide that assimilation and accommodation and um, the students get those aha moments so, really see it come to life so they actually get to get into your center and, and work with the kids design lessons and activities for them yes they do um, they are under the guidance of a lead teacher we call master teachers and they are a master in the field uh -huh. um, yeah so in essence you know they're we're providing that a uh, family and a child center play-based um, and relationship focused early learning experiences for those contextualized ex experiences in the classroom. And that is so important. And, and as we learn more and more about how children and, and adults develop, uh, we all need that. It's interesting that uh, uh, families certainly value that in a preschool, but then as kids get into an elementary school experience, they tend to devalue it. But it's, it is so important, the play-based education and, and uh, the value of, of relationships. How many children are enrolled at the center there? And is, gosh, I didn't even think, is the program uh, only available for COC students? Okay. Um, well, we currently were licensed for 90. Um, with our additional Canyon Country class, we have 100, 110. Oh, wow. Uh, that's the capacity of the facility. And um, this year, although, it's quite different with the pandemic situation. I was going to ask, yeah. Yeah. We'll have, with the reduced class sizes um, to meet those directives, we, we have a capacity of 84. So we'll be current. <laughs> We're right now in that process of um, sending, we sent our families questionnaires and a pre-placement. So we'll, we will be enrolling in the next few weeks. Okay, so have you guys, during this last spring, were you guys, were you guys shut down? Well, we, we chose to um, close the center, but we were still open to the, in, uh, in a distance learning fashion. Okay. Um, so we, our physical environment, um, we had closed and we will be reopening on August 20th. That is great news. I'm sure lots of families are, are excited to hear that. When you're working with preschoolers, how does distance learning work? I can imagine that's a, a huge <laughs> challenge. It, it, the teachers are amazing, I'm telling you. Oh, we had, we've met, we went into action of what can we do? How can we engage our families? How can we engage the children? How can we help them through this crisis that was happening here in our community and surrounding all throughout our world? And they have, 
they had very different ways. There's a lot of different platforms. They, first and foremost, they called. They had actual phone calls. Oh. To the parents and the children. And oftentimes the children wanted the teacher to call them back. <laughs> um, they had Zoom meetings. They had group gatherings and different types of activities that they did. They had Instagram and a Facebook. You know, all of these things were very secured. They were uh, private. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was an amazing way for the teachers to reach out to the families and also provide them with the resources to help them. We had uh, communicated with families via email um, regularly, and we're also providing um, resources in that way in addition to actual, you know, postal mail. Yeah, that's so important. You know, oftentimes as adults, we get caught up in, in what's going on in our world. We forget how important it is for kids to remain in contact with their teachers. That uh, even even though it may be limited to a, a two-dimensional screen or, or a phone call, uh, that sense of normalcy can be so helpful to kids. And, and we forget about that. You know, oftentimes we think of preschool as, as as a child care option, but it's so important in our child's education. So, so glad you guys were, were able to do that. It does take quite a bit of creativity. So again, I, I'm assuming that there are plenty of folks out there that are listening that would be interested as a family to learn more about your center. So how can families uh, find out about more? Do you, do you guys offer tours or is there a, a website that they can go to? Uh, absolutely. We have, um, we typically have a monthly tour, and of course right now when we do reopen this fall, we will not be having any visitors into the center for the okay. time until the directives change and the situation opens up more. But we have had discussions about creating some recorded and have some virtual type tours. So we're looking into that. We're looking into a lot of different options. You had asked also um, about if we only have college students or how, does, how that works. And I, I do want to, I, I did want to share with you that, um, of course, being as a laboratory school on a co community college campus, our priority does go to the student. Um, we also are partially subsidized with the California Department of Education, the Early Learning and Care Division. And um, so families that meet that financial financial criterion and need, um, there's a limited uh, subsidy that we have available. So that's a second priority. And also faculty and staff on, uh, on campus, and then last of all would be our community. We um, do serve a large population of our community. Um, and this fall we'll be looking at uh, a little bit different um, priority rating to include, of course, students, um, the subsidy uh, families that meet the subsidy requirements, and also es essential workers. And um, so to find out more, I have received a few phone calls. Um, we have our website, as Cindy mentioned earlier. Um, we have our website, and so you can go to the, the A to Z index and look us up there at the Center for Early Childhood Education. In the future, we'll be um, um, we're, we've just opened a, a direct email address. Oh, great. Um, the center um, will be publishing that on our website before long. Um, we'll add some new forms and things. And um, there's contact information on our website. Families can learn more about, you know, what we do and the staff and the hours and all of the, those details. I, I know you guys work so hard to, to meet the needs of, of all of your kids. And I am actually a, a testament, you know, years and years and, and years and years and years.
years ago, my oldest daughter actually attended the center for, for a short while, and, and we had some special needs. You mentioned that you work with, uh, with kids of all different levels of needs. My daughter, when she was, uh, I believe she was about three years old, enrolled in your program, and you guys not only worked really hard to find a spot for her, but uh, she actually did not speak English at the time that she enrolled, and, and you guys worked to help us develop a, a bilingual program for her, and it was actually out there at your center that, that my daughter first started speaking speaking English so we were very grateful for the way that you guys worked so hard to accommodate her needs now I have a couple questions for both of you okay um, I, I don't know how to phrase this but but how do you do it I, I've been in education <laughs> for for 25 years and still there are only two things in this world that scare me and that's crickets and preschoolers <laughs> <laughs> so seriously how did, did, did let's talk both you Cindy and Monica how did you decide on a career on in early childhood education is this something that you both always wanted to do mm. this is Cindy I'm gonna go ahead and start Monica and I've had this conversation <laughs> <last time. laughs> So, um, yeah, I always wanted to be a teacher. When I was a little girl, I used to play teacher. I used to take my stuffed animals, and I'd line them all up, and I had my grandpa was a traveling salesman, and for some reason he had a flip chart board, and I would take <laughs> the flip chart and instruct and but when I started community college actually I started at Los Angeles Valley College I'm a valley girl I was born and uh, raised in California and uh, spent a lot of my early years in the uh, San Fernando Valley um, I started taking secretarial classes right but then there's something about child development that lured me and I took my first class with a faculty there named Barbara Falasco and that was it she inspired me I knew I wanted to be a teacher I took a class and that there was my trajectory and I have to tell you Matt that when uh, I started working at College of the Canyons I was finishing up my master's degree I was working in the Child Development Center I had had previous lots of experience working in a Child Development Center in the San Fernando Valley and uh, Joan Waller at the time who was our director who you probably was the director when your daughter came here um, she uh, uh, asked me Cindy, do you think you'd like to teach adult students? And I never thought of that before. I really thought that my whole career would be spent with children. I love four-year-olds. They're, to me, the best age ever. And so I tried it, and what I saw for me was that I could do both. And for a while, I did. And then, um, and then I just, now I'm teaching adults. But I tell my students this all the time. The best part of my job, when we're here and not in a pandemic, is to have my office in the Child Development Center because I get to watch children grow, observe children, interact with children. When I'm stressed out, see, it's funny because children um, alleviate my stress, right? Oh, wow. So, yeah, I'll go sit in the yard, and um, I have really good relationships. We're a family here in the center, and that's the beautiful thing about working here, too, is that family atmosphere. But I'll go out in the yard, and I'll just watch children and observe mm -hmm. them. And to me, the, the, the naivety, the curiosity, the, the just... Who, the, who they are as beings is just inspirational to me. So um, I miss working with children, but I'm just grateful that I get to be a part of the center in that way and to partner with uh, teachers. And then when my students are in the center, I get to hear their stories about their experiences. So yeah, I think preschool age children are the best humans in the whole entire world. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know that you've truly got the calling. What about you, Monica? Were you always interested interested in in working with little ones I was interested in being a teacher but I also worked in an office and it wasn't until I had my daughter mm. that I started taking early childhood education classes and the first class I ever took was when she was 10 months old and it was a language and literacy class because um, I wanted to learn more about her language development and good books to read. And it was that class and that professor that just, I just had to have another class. And I went from one class and just continued taking my classes. And until, it was not until I got to the practicum, which at that time it was a, called a lab class, it wasn't until that student teaching period that I knew that the passion that I was feeling was not only for my own child and children, but 
for all children. And there was something just, I just, I, I discovered that in myself at that time. Because of the lab program and having that direct contact with children, those interactions with the teach, my professor, and that whole experiential learning process was just um, something that I knew. I knew this is what I wanted to do. And I was in the classroom for, and as I shared, you know, in, in the bio, it was, um, I started as an assistant teacher, and then late a few years afterwards, I a master teacher position opened, and I applied for that, and was in the classroom for 14 years, and then um, as a director for the last 14 years. And I think the thing I love most is just seeing, you know, seeing all of the children and the parents, and having that relationship. Um, seeing them come in in the morning, seeing them in the classroom engaging, and it's that that everything is new. Mm. Everything is new, and there, there's this complete presence that uh, with a child. They are completely present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that's something very important for all of us you know, to be completely present. Absolutely. A three-year-old usually isn't thinking about what they're going to cook for dinner or that meeting <laughs> they've got coming up this this uh, this afternoon. You know, it's interesting. We often tell people that, uh, you know, they need to, uh, to find their passion in life, and that is very true. But oftentimes, our passion finds us, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, I... Uh, I, I mentioned that I've been in education for 25 years. All through school, though, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an ophthalmologist, but I would analyze my teachers from early on, fourth grade, third grade, I would analyze my teachers and say, you know, if I was teaching this lesson, I'd do it differently. And then it, early in high school, I started thinking, you know, it's too bad I'm not going to be a teacher. I'd be a pretty good one. <laughs> And, you know, I finally, uh, that, that passion found me through uh, uh, my high school history teacher. I was just uh, thrilled by, by the amazing passion that he, he had, and, and, and he infected the rest of us. And I thought, yeah, I want to do that. I want to teach high school history. And so I, I went through, I got my degree in history, and uh, because I'm bilingual, I, I ended up teaching elementary school for a couple of years. And I thought, yeah, I can do this for a couple of years until I get my secondary credential. And then one day early on, on coming back in from recess, a little third grader reached up and, and just held my hand as we walked back into class. And I thought, yeah, yeah, I can do elementary school. This is great. So absolutely. Sometimes you find your passion. Sometimes your passion finds you. Cindy Stevens is the senior faculty member and Monica Marshall is the director of the College of the Canyon Center for Early Childhood Education. Ladies, I want to thank you so much for joining us. You guys be well. Thank you. You too, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Of course. All right. We've got one last commercial break, and then we will be right back. As I said before, for more information on how COVID-19 is affecting our valley and the surrounding areas, I want you to go to hometownstation.com and click on the red banner. There you're going to find tips on the economy, health updates, special business hours, and much, much more. You are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. These days, it's hard to figure out how to fill all the self isolation isolation time, let alone figure out what to have for lunch or dinner. Salt Creek Grill owner Greg Amsler is helping us out in a big, big way. Salt Creek is now offering takeout and curbside pickup, so you don't even have to get out of your car. Their entire menu is available for pickup or delivery, including to-go beer and wine. Hey, in addition, Greg's offering wine at 25% off along with daily specials. If you'd like to buy a gift card for a future visit, now's the time. Buy a $50 gift card and get 10 extra dollars on the card completely free. Buy a $100 gift card, you get an extra 25 bucks. Salt Creek Grill, located next to Regal Cinema at the Valencia Mall. For more info, go to saltcreekgrill.com. Hey, this is Ellen Kay, and I'm so excited. Exert More Than Urgent Care is now open in Canyon Country, right near Highway 14 and Soledad Canyon Road. Exert is the ER alternative that's built and staffed by ER doctors. And with on-site lab, x-ray, and pharmacy, Exer has more medical services than most urgent care. Open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Walk in and be seen in minutes. Visit exerurgentcare.com for more information. That's E-X-E-R urgentcare.com. 
Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker has been ranked the 15th most influential person in the entire Santa Clarita Valley in 2010 by the Santa Clarita Valley Business Journal. When everything is on the line, call the Hacker Law Group. And now, a cooking tip from Keith Mowry from Bob's Country Meats. Everyone loves chicken. It's easy to cook in a variety of ways, especially on the barbecue. Marinate it overnight in your favorite marinade. Brown it up nice on the barbecue, and then put it on the other side in direct heat. Close your lid. Take another 25, 30 minutes, and they're good. Chicken, tri-tip, pork chops, turkey, steaks, even exotic game like buffalo and ostrich. For the tastiest chicken in town, visit Bob's Country Meats on Soledad in Canyon Country. Finding the right auto body shop can feel like a never-ending search. Caesar, owner of Body Shop 661, has a passion for your car and his business. We really pride ourselves in quality craftsmanship with no unnecessary delays. More than just repairs, Body Shop 661, trusted, reliable, respected for over 16 years in the Santa Clarita Valley. Visit BodyShop661.com or give them a call, 661-251-2252. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, the Way Out Recovery SEV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call the Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead Charter Schools Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. But I got a question for you. How are you listening to SCVI and I Lead Charter Schools homeschooling answers, Eye on the Valley edition? Are you, are you listening on the terrestrial radio? Shane, I know you're a fan of the terrestrial radio listeners. You, you like it old school. Shout them out every time. <laughs> but uh, I know a lot of you are listening on Facebook Live. You can Facebook Live us. That's right. You head over to Facebook and click on KHTS Radio, and there we are. Or perhaps, uh, perhaps you're listening on your smart device, your Amazon Echo. It's really easy. You just tell them to play KHTS. You know, whenever there's an emergency, one of the first things that goes out is, hey, you know, make sure you get a battery operated radio. Make sure you get something that has an antenna. You know, you can just turn on real quick right. and tune in. I just have that around my house because, you know, I like the radio. I always kind of laugh whenever I hear that during an emergency and I kind of look around my house and go, oh, I've already got two, so I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, like I said, when I'm around the house, I enjoy listening on, uh, on my Alexa device. I just tell her to play KHTS, and she does. You can also stream live on our website, hometownstation.com. And while you're doing that, you can check out the local uh, news and, uh, and updates. You can also download our app so you can take KHTS with you wherever you go on your Android or iPhone device. Just uh, download that free app. And again, you can check out all the local news while you, you stream our programming live. So do stay tuned. We do have, well, we were talking earlier about early childhood education. The ECE Center out at COC provides an incredible uh, opportunity. And I know with all the changes and, and the different things going on, districts putting out their plan for next year, folks are, are starting to question, uh, you know, what they want to do for next year. Uh, we're, we're living in an amazing time uh, in education. You know, I read that 50 years ago, the, the single most important decision a parent could make is what doctor to take 
take their child to, you know, because those were the, the choices that you had. You didn't have a choice in, in what school to send your kid to 50 years ago, or uh, I was going to say, or even when I was a kid, but that was almost 50 years ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, now the number one decision that a parent has, the most important decision that a parent has is where to send their child to school. And with, like I said, with all the shifts and, and different things going on as this pandemic evolves and we're trying to figure out how we're going to get our kids back to school next fall, you may be thinking about where you're going to send your child. I want to remind you that there are options in the Valley. Uh, in fact, we've got some, it's, the great thing is we've got amazing options. It, 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 it's difficult to find a place that isn't a great school here in Santa Clarita. And, and the terrific thing is you can look for what is best for you and your family and know that you're going to get a high quality education. Uh, we do offer a uh, free education. Uh, you know, oftentimes people ask uh, if we at charter schools are private schools. We are not. Uh, we are, we're public schools. And so if you'd like to uh, check us out at SCVI over on the west side of the valley, go to iLeadSantaClarita.org. Over on the east side of the valley, you can check out iLeadAguadulce.org. Or if you're looking to do a, a little bit more distance learning, maybe you and your kid really clicked and, and you're looking for an online program, you can check out iLeadOnline.org or iLeadExploration.org. iLeadExploration is our homeschooling opportunity. Well, uh, I'm looking forward at uh, at the rest of this week, and, and we've got a great week set up for us. He, you know, we have Mayor Cameron Smythe coming in like he always does on Tuesdays. He'll be in tomorrow morning. So if you've got questions for the mayor, make sure you get them to me. You know, there's always somebody who starts sending in questions as soon as we're wrapping up with the mayor. I feel bad that we can't ask those questions. But we will have Mayor Cameron Smythe on tomorrow and Matt Browning from Mend Cryotherapy coming in uh, and we're also going to have a fun top 10 list tomorrow looking forward to wednesday we've got suzette martinez valladares do you know suzette she uh, she ran for assembly in the most recent election and now she's working with operation child care she's doing some some great things she's going to be coming in on wednesday along with beth heiserman from reyes winery they've got some great things going on out at the winery for fourth uh, fourth of july as well as uh, jeff berber he's the manager of the main on thursday we've got uh, the president of the William S. Hart uh, School Board coming in, Linda Storley. Linda and I go go back several years. She's a, a wonderful educator and and now president of the school board there at the Hart District. We'll also be talking to Bob Sheritz on Thursday from the Way Out Recovery. You know, we talked about some of those bad habits that some of us have picked up. Maybe Bob can 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 help us with some of those habits. And then we'll wrap up the week on Thursday with Big T like we always do. Well, that is all the time that we have for today. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank our guest, Norb Monis from A Royal Sweet Home Furnishings, and our uh, friend Christina Debray, licensed marriage and family therapist, as well as Cindy Stevens and Monica Marshall from the College of the Canyon Center for Early Childhood Education. And as always, show contributor, engineer Shane, and I am your host, Matt Watson. This is your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS.